Welcome and thanks for joining us on the Channel's Book Club. In 1977, Macmillan began a series of pop fiction novels written by African writers. It was called the Paysetter series, and it turned out to be hugely successful. Over the next 15 years, 130 of the novels were published. The novels included Meet Me in Conakry, The Smugglers, Symphony of Destruction, The Betrayer, The Delinquent, the Extortionists, and Sisi. Our first guest today is Yemi Shikwade, the author of Sisi, one of the most popular novels of the Paysetter series. She joined us to discuss the series and her writings. We'll be right back after we take a short break. Many factors define your health. Some you can control, while others are simply beyond you. On Health News, we highlight all these factors and through medical experts provide information that will help you take informed decisions on healthy living, nutrition, and keeping fit. Get incisive health quality analysis. Health News, promoting good health. Welcome to the Channels Book Club. Thank you Thank for you. joining us. Thank you for inviting me. First of all, in your opinion, what, what made the Pesetta series so successful? Very good. You know, uh, prior to that time, there had been books, but they were really literal kind of books, academic, okay. you know, that were well known in Nigeria. When the Pesetta series was introduced, uh, we were trying to get rid of uh, James Hadley Chase mm. from the market. Yeah. You know, it was so, yeah. so very popular, very, very popular at that time. So the Pesetta came in with stories that people could relate to. Everyday events. Nothing, as you say, is pop fiction. pop fiction. You know, they could relate to events in the book very well and they were excited mm. because it was an everyday thing that was happening amongst them that we, we wrote about mm. you know the corrupt directors the um, tribalisms and things like that things that were really happening to them they could identify with yeah. that was why it was so so popular so at that time mm. and i think that um the publisher, yes. Macmillan, mm -hmm. also did a good job of really selling that they brand. Did. Yeah, they, they created did. that Pesetta brand they did. They did. and um, it became so popular. Yes, uh, by giving that title Pesetta, you know, that is, is, that is one thing you have to mind in writing, when writing books, your titles. By giving it a title Pesetta, it caught attention. Mm. Pesetta mm. is something they want to read, you want to pick it up and yeah. Read it, yeah. you know. So what, what happened to, I mean, um, most of you, uh, <laughs> there, there were 130 of those novels, yeah. started in yeah. 1977. Yeah. Um, you are here. Oh, are you in touch with any of the other writers? Do you know what has happened to some of the other writers? Yeah. Unfortunately, we are so scattered. There's no forum where to meet. You know, that, that's, I don't know whether it's our fault or the fault of publishers. We should get us together again, you know, to interact. Because at the beginning, they had a big banquet for us at Ibadan. Mm -hmm. A very big banquet. Mm -hmm. Where everybody met everybody, sort of mm -hmm. chatted and, you know. We could have loved something like that to happen mm -hmm. again and again, you know. But uh, unfortunately, I don't know, like human beings. How old were you when you wrote it? What I was in my thirties. <laughs> I was in my thirties, early thirties, and um, there was a lot of tribalism. You know that I didn't experience when I was a young person in school. We mixed together in school. We had Igbos, but we had. I went to Queen's College, by the way. There was there was a, there was a uh, Sierra Leonean amongst us. There's a, a Hausa. Uh, Cameroonians, you know, when I was young, when I was in my teens. And when I grew up, I discovered that that there was a, a, a demarcation 
there was a, a, a distinction between Yorubas and the Igbos, the Hausas, which I never realized before. Uh. And that interested me. So CC is about a young uh, boy coming from the north uh. and going to the south to stay with CC's people, the Yorubas. And he is scared. Uh, but his mother told him, said, what is the thing about tribalism? Is because of fear. Mm. Is the fear that you don't want to, when you don't, when, for instance, as I'm sitting with you now, if there's a third person here and we start speaking in Igbo, after speaking Igbo, when I turn to you, 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 you will change towards me. <laughs> because you know that I know one language yeah. that you don't know. Mm -hmm. You cannot speak, yeah. you know. Yeah. There be, the, 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 the level of rapport will change. It's yeah. natural. Is that fear? Okay, yeah. what killed what killed the Peseta series? Well, as I was told, um, it was the global recession at that time. Now we there's an argument as to whether it is global or whether it was just local. But there's the cost of paper, the cost of printing mm. was so much, it was so high that they felt that if they continued, we would not be able to buy the books. Mm. Maybe if, I mean, for instance, the book was selling at that time maybe 300 naira, something like that. Now, nobody wants to spend 700 naira on the same book. Mm. The price would have gone up sure. because of the recession, because of the cost of printing, mm. cost of publishing. Mm. So, of course, everything went down at that time. There was a lull. You, you, you also mentioned that um, there was an introduction of taxation or something. Yes, the, the, the fact that, um, well, Nigeria, no, so not only Nigeria, most other countries did, went against the Florence Agreement. The UNESCO Florence, UNESCO Florence uh, Agreement. Okay. You know, you're not supposed to tax um, uh, uh, importation of import, books. Imp books and uh, uh, Journal. journals and publications that helps with education and reading. Because that's how you, you, uh, you disseminate information sure. from one country to the other. Let it flow, let it flow easily. Yeah. You learn from each other. You learn about so many things about the other country. As I was telling you, if, if I speak a different language now, you, 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 you shrink a bit from me. But if, you, if they, if you have books that are translated mm. into different languages mm. and they are flowing into the country easily mm. without any taxes, no barrier, no nothing, things will go very well. And UNESCO believed that it could bring world peace. Mm. You see? And that's one of the reasons why uh, the peace setters went down. No. Hmm. Unfortunately, recently, uh, we, we, we have, we've had this issue of taxation again in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Yes, as um, it's gone up now yeah, by 6.5 percent. Point something percent, yes. and it threw the entire publishing sector into chaos. You know, and all. But hopefully, I mean, we are hearing unofficially that that is there's something I being done. I hope so. I hope so. To deal with that. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, so, what have you been up to? Well, right now I'm retired. I'm a retired civil servant. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I work with two NGOs. One is called CLL, that's a child lifeline. They bring children from under the bridge. Okay. And I teach fine art. I know a bit of art. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I teach fine art and moral education. Okay. Uh, and the other NGO, the CSCCWI, that's Street Children Care Welfare Initiative. That one, to take care of children from Mar Morocco areas and children that have run away from home that are in Ushud area, mm. Idioru, they collect them, mm. you know. They, if they are willing to come, we don't force anybody. If they are willing, the child is willing to come. Of course, we, they talk to them about what will happen if they are taken. They will go to school. 
they have shelter, they have meals, they have clothes, you know, they have a comfortable environment and they will be given an opportunity to improve their lives, mm. you know. And uh, in the SCCWI one, I was there witness to the graduating of um, a couple of boys, about uh, maybe 10 of them, who graduated mm. from mm. that place. Mm. They went to school, they, they put them in schools. In fact, some of them go to private schools. Because we, if you get sponsors who are willing to pay for these children to go to these private schools, they pay. You have sponsors who pay, mm. and they go to private schools, and they come out, and they graduate. We don't have a lot of time. <laughs> it's been fantastic speaking with you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us on the channel. Thank Club. you very much. And I hope uh, we'll have you here again. Thank you very soon. much. Thank, Thank you. you.